Are you a social or environmental purpose organization asked to demonstrate the impact of your programs and projects? Have you documented your impact strategy either using theory of change or five dimensions of impact? Hey everyone, my name is Chris Gaines, lead trainer at SOPACT. And if you are a nonprofit, accelerator, or social enterprise wanting to measure what matters by selecting meaningful metrics, you're in the right place. This video will help you understand the importance of selecting the right metrics. We'll also discuss the different standards available and the different contexts in which you might find each of them useful. If you haven't watched our previous videos on theory of change and five dimensions of impact, I highly recommend you do that first. All links will be below in the description. And don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming content we have planned for you. Without further ado, let's jump into the definition and importance of impact metrics. By definition, a metric is a quantifiable measure that is used to assess the result of a specific process. Selecting the right metrics can be hard, so many organizations end up measuring the wrong things, which results in misrepresentation of their impact. By measuring what matters, your organization will gain credibility with funders, donors, and the public. Not to mention all the insights you will gather to plan for potential risks and make well-informed decisions. There are two ways to define your metrics, selecting them from well-known standards or creating bespoke metrics. First, let's dive into the standard metrics. Do you know how to select the right standard for you? Try the following guidelines. Number one, what changes are my programs or projects generating? For example, if your impact strategy claims to be creating quality jobs, ask yourself if the jobs generated are really quality. It's not enough to measure how many new jobs you are creating. Are the jobs paying enough to have a quality life? Do the employers offer relevant benefits like healthcare? In this example, you have to define what you consider a quality job in the context of your beneficiaries. Number two, who wants to know the result of my program or project? Are you collecting data insights for external audiences, such as your beneficiaries, funders, and the public? Or is it your internal audiences, such as staff and volunteers? Every one of them may like to know the results of different metrics. Number three, should my metrics be quantitative or qualitative? I'll give you the answer to this one, both. Numbers are helpful to show improvement over time and see trends, but they're not enough to tell a comprehensive story. Number four, should I measure outputs or outcomes? Remember that impact refers to a systemic change, which is hard to measure. However, outcome metrics can serve as an indicator of the change happening when analyzed over time. You'll find it easy to select activity and output metrics, but always make sure to include a few relevant outcome metrics as well. Number five, do you have the financial and human resources to collect the metric results? While selecting your metrics, don't forget to ask if your organization has the necessary budget and capacity to collect the results for these metrics. Remember, we're not selecting metrics for the sake of it. We want to measure what happens and be able to back up the results with reliable data. Now, as I mentioned before, there are different standard metrics that have been defined by organizations like the Global Impact Investment Network and the United Nations. These organizations dedicate resources to research and refine each of these metrics. So you have a reliable source of information. So what are the different standards out there and who uses them? Different sectors tend to use different standards. First, you must know about the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals, commonly known as SDG. The SDG have defined indicators for poverty alleviation, education, health, environmental care, etc., and are the results of years of international negotiation. IRIS metrics by the Global Impact Investors Network, or GIIN, are designed to measure the social, environmental, and financial performance of impact investments. GuideStar is a gold standard for nonprofits in the US. Global Reporting Initiative, GRI, UNEP Sustainable Metrics, and SASB are focused on sustainable production and governance. Now, you may ask, what if these standard metrics fail to measure some of my specific outcomes? You can always design your bespoke outcome or output metrics but to do it effectively, we recommend that you involve an impact management expert to make sure that you are indeed measuring what matters. So to recap, to make sure that you are selecting or using the right metrics, ask yourself, what changes are my programs or projects generating? Who wants to know the result of my programs or projects? Should my metrics be quantitative or qualitative? Should I measure outputs or outcomes? And do you have the financial and human resources to collect the metrics results? 
You can always start by selecting a group of standard metrics that are outcome and output oriented, and then make modifications to fit your context. If these metrics don't fulfill all of your needs, you can complement them with relevant custom metrics. Here at SoFact, we understand that organizations just like yours face challenges while defining their metrics. So we've included all the most important standard metrics in our platform, Impact Cloud. We help you select the right metrics based on the best practices, and we can even advise you in the creation of custom metrics, all as a part of the definition of your impact strategy on Impact Cloud. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you learned something new, and I'm curious to hear what challenges you and your organization are currently facing when it comes to defining your metrics. Drop a comment down below and let's get the discussion started. And if you found this information helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel since the standard metrics are continuously evolving and we don't want you to miss out on any updates. More about collecting quality impact data and designing stakeholder surveys will come in future videos. And until then, this has been Chris Gaines. I'll see you in the next one.